Hi, I'm Melissa Ellison Dewey of Bob and Boy, and um, Bob and Boy is an international, internationally based fiber arts restoration business. We mainly work with spinning wheels. Spinning wheels have bobbins. We make a lot of bobbins, so we came up with the name Bob and Boy. Um, Bob and Boy consists of myself and my husband, Master Turner Alan Dewey, and with this series, The Wood Turner's Apprentice. We thought that we would bring you through the entirety of the wood turning trade. It is absolutely for free. Um, and we do this because we want there to be more wood turners. We believe in the, um, in the validity of the trade, even in this modern era. We do not believe that it is entirely a disposable world. Um, we do believe that skills are important, and so we want to do our bit to perpetrate that through wood turning. Um, I'm going to be the one speaking in the first two videos because this is kind of my normal venue is to run my mouth. I'm a PhD educated professor of history and also early modern technology. Um, actually full scale type technology in early modern history. I did technology from Archimedes screw to like NASA or something like that and then I stopped. Um, early, the early modern period ends roughly in 1820 and I specialized in Europe. Um, I tend to go on up into the Victorian era when I'm working with equipment. Alan meanwhile is a master turner. Um, he is from Hull in London in England. Began his work with turning as a metal turner, as a metal engineer in um, at the time of the late 1960s when he started there was a job boom. You couldn't move from one place to the other without getting another job, and so Alan had a lot of jobs. He claims to have had 81 jobs, um, and yet, despite 81 jobs, he's also been a master turner for 30 years, so he's been a busy boy. Um, when he switched into using a wood turning lathe, he actually began with a um, drill and, and various tools mounted to the drill and he did that in the, in the front room of his flat in Putney which is on the south side of the Thames in London and quickly worked into getting a real lathe and working with um, chest sets in the main plus he also did a lot of repairs and, and things like that for smalls which are just little odds and you know smalls right small stuff little boxes vases that sort of thing in the um he worked with the portobello market and other antiques markets on the weekends in london and then he would go back home do all of his work during the week to get the stuff done and then take it back the next week and it was a lovely model if you are anywhere near a large market that might need repairs and this that and the other like they lost a pawn out of a chest paid piece or they need a little bun foot on the bottom of a box or whatever, you might want to think about setting up with with some version of Alan's model because what he would do is he would go to the market early so that he wasn't in the way of the customers, make the rounds of all the people that he worked with, and then he'd be wrapped up by 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning and go on back home and then he'd go back the next Saturday with the work done. And it was that ability to get it fixed quickly and work on a, an individual basis with the various um, auction stall, you know, the antique stall owners and the business owners there that, that made him a tidy living and also allowed him to, you know, the more work you have, the better your skills get. There's nothing like having to do it right in order to learn to do it right. Um, now, I want to get to what we're doing here. Our purpose here is to teach you the wood turning trade. We're going to specialize a lot in fiber art stuff at the beginning because there's demand for that, but one of the things that I want to and need to say is that what you might do for a spinning wheel bobbin is exactly what you might do for a chest pawn, just on a smaller scale, okay? What you might do for uprights that are called maidens or sisters of a spinning wheel for the mother of all assembly is exactly what you might do in order to make a replacement if you had a, a broken, turned upright of a chair, okay? There's not any difference. If you work on a large lathe, you can do stair newels, um, you can do porch railings and that sort of thing. Turning is turning. And so even if it's, you know, we're going to show products, but we will try to remember to point out when this works exactly the same way with other things because it, it, there's not any difference. Um, within that world of turning and on the same lathe over and over, you can work obviously with wood, you can work with bone, 
You could have worked with ivory, but it is now illegal, so don't work with ivory, okay? And you can work with the softer metals. We do quite a bit of work with brass and um, the occasional reluctant bit of work, as you'll see with flyers when we're doing spinning wheel flyers in steel. So the, the, the tool itself is um, used with, with various media, if you will, or materials if you're going to stay kind of low key. Another thing that is explicit with me and Alan is we're not um, snobs, for lack of a more refined word. We don't think that it takes expensive tools in order to be a good wood, wood turner. We don't think that it takes a lot of tools in order to be a good wood turner. Your tools will come, and we'll try to remember to show you what you need for each job. As you know, if you're going to do that job, it's kind of like recipe cooking. You're going to have to go and get those ingredients. If you're going to do this job, um, then you're going to need what we're using. Okay, and so we'll try to remember to do that. Your tools will come along, but there's not. We have very intentionally stayed very, very low key with tools. Um, and because that's how we work. We are professional wood turners and we don't have people here in order to show them our tools. Instead, what we focus on is our skills. We are not talented people. We are highly skilled people. And we're much more pleased with skills which are learned and earned than we would ever be with talents which you, you know, you just fall out of the womb with talents. You didn't do anything for your talents. But skills are something that you need to acquire and that is much, much more important than tools, which is just something that you buy, okay? So that's where we stand with the tools. Another thing that I feel that I need to say, and this applies to working with us at all times, this is a, 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 an umbrella legal caveat, so please do listen because it applies, okay? We're gonna show you how we work. We are not telling you how you should work. You decide how you should work. And what that means is that you are responsible for your safety. We work as wood turners five and six days a week, and this is how we do it. That's our business, and we are inviting you into our world through this series because you are becoming our apprentice or you just want to watch to see how stuff is done. But if you are becoming our apprentice and you buy our own tool, uh, buy your own tools, you decide what you want. You may want a dust collection system. We don't have one. You may want to wear safety goggles. We both wear eyeglasses, and so we have impact resistant stuff, and we feel that that's good enough. You might want to wear a mask. We do sometimes. We don't all the time. It is not a, a, a caveat, much less, you know, a mask mask like some people wear. That's absolutely fine. We're not ridiculing anything. We might take the safety card off of something in order to cut it. Again, that's us. And this is our business that we're letting you into. You decide how to conduct your business, and we are not in the least bit responsible for anything that you do to yourself in the course of conducting your business with, with turning. Uh, a last thing, you can tell I was a professor, okay? This is like the syllabus. A last thing that I need to say is that we're very busy. We normally have about 100 jobs in, in process at, at one point or another. In, in the, the Bob and Boy trajectory or the chess spy trajectory, that's the antique chess sets that Alan them, is the world's premier restorer of. Um, we've got a hundred things going on, okay? I also work, work full time as an MDS coordinator, I'm a registered nurse. So what that means as far as you're concerned with being our apprentice here on YouTube is that I'm not gonna read your comments and I'm not gonna answer your questions. Do not. Please do not write to me with questions. Don't message me with questions. Don't send a pass, uh, carrier pigeon with questions. Don't use my email for questions. Don't put questions down in the comments. I'm not going to answer them. We are showing you the best, as best we can how we do what we do, but I do not have time to hold your hand. Another thing that I will point out, and this will just be food for thought, okay, is that, again, in that idea of learning skills, we know what we're doing and we're showing you how we do it. If you become a wood turner 10 or 15 years from now, you might very well do it a different way and that's fine. But it is the mark of a beginner to see something like, I use this for turning and they say, oh, could you use this or could you use that? Or how about if you do this and how about if you do that? You know, I would tell you to be quiet if we were in a class, right? Because 
I'm not trying to brainstorm with you and we're not having a really fun time thinking about options. I'm trying to teach you what you need to know. Okay, so I'm going to teach you the way that I do it. And so you might want to learn it the way that we do it. Get up on your feet, get your skills, get your mojo, okay, and then begin developing your own identity within this trade. That's an important thing to do, but not as a beginner. As a beginner, you're talking about something that you don't know anything about yet. Okay, so we're here to teach you, and that's what we're doing. Um, I had something pass through my mind that I also needed to chat about, but I don't remember what it is, so we're going to turn this one off and um, move on to the next, which is how to set up your workshop.